In this lesson, we're going to look at how to solve rational equations. So a rational equation is just an equation that has variables in the denominator. And all of our rational equations in this video are going to turn out to be uh, linear equations after we get rid of the denominators. So if you know how to solve linear equations, you'll still be fine here. And we're still going to solve by multiplying each term by the least common denominator the same way we saw in the last lesson, which was solve linear equations containing fractions. Uh, we learned how to find the common denominator and multiply everything by it to cancel the denominators. And that's what we will do here as well. Except there's one other little thing we have to take care of, kind of a housekeeping item, and that is... Uh, we, we know from previous experience we can't let the denominator equal zero, so we will have to find all the numbers that would make the denominator equal zero, and those numbers are called restrictions here, and they are not allowed to be solutions. So if we ever do find a restriction, and that turns out to be a solution to the equation, we have to throw it out. So let's solve 1 over x equals 1 over 5 plus 3 over 2x. So this is a rational equation and I do have variables in the denominator. So first thing we're going to find our restrictions or we're going to find out what would make these denominators equal 0 and then we know that we can't have a solution that's equal to those numbers. So if x is 0, then this denominator is 0. Therefore, x cannot be 0. If I look at this denominator, uh, it's just a 5 all by itself. So, there's no x here. And since there's no x, there's no way that an x value can make this denominator equal 0. So, no variable means no restriction. And then for this denominator, 2x would not be allowed to equal 0, but that just means that x can't be 0. So same restriction again for this fraction. Okay, now let's do our common denominator. Our common denominator, we need an x because of this one. We also need a 5 factor, and because of this factor, we need a 2, but we already have an x, so I won't put down another one. So x times 5 times 2 is 10x. Now here's another way to think of this that may be a little slicker for you. Um, we can look here and say, okay, our common denominator needs an x because we see x in two different places. And then for the number, we need a number that this can go into and that this can go into. Something 5 and 2 can both go into would be 10. So that's just another way to think of it. Let's take our equation now and multiply everything by 10x. So I've multiplied the left side by 10x and the entire right side by 10x. And now let's reduce. In this fraction, the x's will cancel and we get 10. 10 times 1 leaves 10. And in this fraction, 10 over 5 simplifies to 2. 2 times x times 1 makes 2x. And in this fraction, 10 over 2 simplifies to 5, and the x's will still cancel. So I'll get 5 times 3 is 15. So now we have this little equation. Let's subtract 5 from both, or 15 rather, from both sides. And that will give us negative 5 equals 2x. Divide both sides by 2 and negative 5 over 2 equals x. So that's our solution. We just want to make sure that our solution is not a restriction, and of course it's not. So that means this is a valid solution. And if you wanted to, you could even take this solution and plug it back in over here. I suggest using maybe a calculator and uh, you know get yourself a decimal equivalent here, plug it in over here and make sure both sides equal the same number. So here's a new example. 
5 over 2x equals 17 over 18 minus 1 over 3x. And we'll do our restrictions first. So 2x is not allowed to equal 0, therefore x cannot equal 0. This one does not contain an x, so we skip right over it. And 3x cannot equal 0, therefore x cannot equal 0 here either. And our only restriction is 0. Now our LCD, let's look for a number that 2 and 18 and 3 can all go into. Of course it's 18, and I do need an x. Okay, so now I've copied the equation over, and what we're going to do here is multiply each thing by 18x, just like we did in the last example. Okay, now simplify. 18x over 2x gives you 9, and 9 times 5 is 45. 18x over 18 simplifies and gives you x, so that leaves us 17x. 18x over 3x simplifies to 6. 6 times 1 is 6. So now we will simplify this. Add 6 to both sides. 6 plus 45 is 51. Divide both sides by 17. And it turns out 51 divided by 17 is 3. So that is the solution. And since it's not a restriction, we're in good shape. Here is one more example for us. We have 1 over x minus 1 plus 5 equals 11 over x minus 1. So here our restriction is that this denominator cannot equal 0, so x minus 1 can't equal 0. Well, that means x cannot equal 1. If we solve this and find out that 1 is supposed to be the solution, we'll have to throw it out. Okay, so let's see. Our common denominator would just be x minus 1, because I have one of them here. I have one here. My common denominator is to have one of them. So we're going to copy the same equation again and multiply everything by x minus 1. Okay, so let's cancel here. That'll leave us a 1. Now let's distribute the 5. 5 times x and 5 times 1. And now we're going to cancel here. And that will leave us 11. So 1 minus 5 is negative 4. So I have negative 4 plus 5x here equals 11. Now let's add 4 to both sides. 5x equals 15. Divide both sides by 5, x equals 3. Since 3 is not a restriction, this is okay. So x equals 3, you might just take a calculator and plug in to make sure that um, these two add up to the same, you know, the left side equals the right side, but um, basically that's all we've got here. All right, last one of these. Let's solve x over x minus 2 equals 2 over x minus 2 minus 2 thirds. So first we'll do our restrictions. And we know x minus 2 cannot equal 0. And so x cannot equal 2. That's the only restriction. So if, our, if we solve this and the solution comes up as 2, we have to throw it out. Um, so common denominator then will be x minus 2. And we also need a factor of 3, which I'm going to put in the front. So that's our common denominator. And now I'm going to copy the same equation over and multiply everything by that common denominator. Okay, first off, first term, x minus 2's cancel, and we're left with 3x. Here, x minus 2's cancel, and we're left with 3 times 2. And here the 3's cancel, and we're left with 2 times x minus 2. Now distribute that minus 2, negative 2x plus 4. I should go ahead and multiply those two together. Okay, 
Now, I can combine terms on the right. 6 plus 4 makes 10. And let's add 2x to both sides. And divide both sides by 5, and we find the solution is x equals 2. But we've already said that x cannot equal 2 because that causes the denominator to equal 0. So actually, 2 is a false solution. And so we have to throw this out and say that there is no solution here because the only one that we thought was going to work turned out to be a restriction, so we're left with no solution at all.